think I do. I mean, yeah. I do so much of it though. Like I spend, I promise you, I promise you, I spend more time in the outdoors doing more kind of gnarly, endurancey, strenuous sort of shit than most of the musicians that you know. It's a huge part of my life. It's actually like playing music and like music gear is almost taking a back seat to like, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an avid cyclist. Uh, I, I do like mountain biking, road biking, you know, gravel, gravel biking and uh, trail running, hiking. But it's weird. I try to find line. Like a lot of people don't really want to hear about that because they just want to think that I just make music and it comes from this place. But like in a weird way, it's tied. It's tied in with me so much where it's like I feel like I have to mention that to a degree. I do it so much that it actually doesn't even make sense to keep track of the places that I go. I'm just like, I, I don't go on vacation unless there's like some outdoor recreation element to it. I would never, fucking never in my life go on a cruise ship or like anything where like, you're just like, or like on a coach with like a, just like, I have to be out. I have to be out and immersed in my environment. That's it. That's just who I am. That's how I'm built. I got the bug early on in my life to, uh, I need to be out in it. I need to sweat a little bit while I'm doing it. Is there really no chance to start once again? If I can directly respond to Sasha, as you've been around for a while and I appreciate you, buddy. He knows what an ELO fan I am. And he's asking a question about German bands. And uh, seems like the most, most of the German music I listen to is just, are like these really sad solo piano guys that do like this experimental ambient kind of piano music i think he's worried that i that my my take on german music is the scorpions and it's not try baby try to win back your love again wait what is here we go again all the way from the start i would try to change things that killed our love your pride has built a wall so strong that I can't get through. Is there really no chance to stop once again? I'm still loving you. Yeah. <laughs> Man, music has no borders, bro. Um, Sweden. That's where the shit's at. That's where all my favorite bands are from. Sweden. Okay. One, two, three, four. How's it going to thousand round? Welcome back to solid ground, my friend. Hello. Still trying to figure out where to look. Look at the screen. Look at the lens. The eternal question. Look at yourself or look at what other people are looking at. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting deep already. Okay. I made a song called He's Simple, He's Dumb, He's the Pilot. And I get a lot of questions about it. And probably a good idea to try to answer some of those questions because I don't know a lot of them myself. It's so big, it's so right, it's so lovely. Where on earth did it come from? Uh, that's one question. Uh, how did you go about constructing and arranging it? That's another question. Who is this 2000 man? Whatever. Um. <laughs> so full admission, 
at the end of um, under the Western Freeway, I had just gotten turned on to OK Computer, which blew my fucking mind. And, um, you know, I lived way out in the country. Granddaddy was just like this shitty little aspiring band that was just getting, you know, a little bit of recognition beyond our own town. So just as I was finishing Under the Western Freeway, I was like, oh, my God, next level. And I already started contemplating what what might happen on the next record. So I could not wait to make this big three-part epic, um, similar to Paranoid Android. So if you listen to it, uh, it might be similar in form to Paranoid Android. I was actually afraid that people would pick up on that, especially, you know, tap it into the whole like, oh, Y2K, all that shit about being paranoid about technology and blah, 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 which is like people read way too into that. Um, but they did. That's fine. In my mind, it was just more like, I love the idea of having like these three parts that existed that you could tie together and have them be, you know, like this little mini, these little suites, this little, you know, miniature, I don't know. That's how smart I am. I don't know anything about music. I don't know terminology about anything. And 2000 Man, it was probably me. I have a pretty good habit of uh, being like third party guy and not talking directly about myself because I'm not that kind of a person. I was just warning myself. The more exposure and the more popular granddaddy started to get, the more I started to worry about retaining my own privacy. It was just very important for me to not change from who I was into what I suspected that people were capable of turning into. Although I learned later on, I'm just, that's not in my DNA. You know, I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. The ones who end up turning into weirdos or just like they were destined to turn into weirdos. <laughs> I'm one of the good guys. All right. You can count on me. You can count, you can count on me. Whoa. Um, I'm never going to let you down. I guess that's the end of the he's simple, he's dumb, he's a pilot question. Oh. A question about growing up in the Central Valley, which is a very unique place in California, Modesto specifically for us. It was super influential to us as a band and developing our sound and our, our uh, unintentionally our aesthetic because we just basically look like, you know, everybody else where we lived, but like when we went, you know, abroad or uh, traveled anywhere else, people are just like, oh, you guys look fucking weird. We used to have like huge buses, like driving through like Germany would like pull over and just like people are like laughing at us, like we're a bunch of clowns. And we were just like granddaddy, you know, like, having a day off, like going to do our laundry and we're like walking down the street and just like people just like laughing at us because we look so fucking weird. <laughs> which which now is hilarious. But um, when you're like, you know, sad and hungover and, <laughs> and just like exhausted, that's not that cool. A bunch of Germans laughing at you in a bus. <laughs> Anyways, I love Germany. And maybe it was even fucking Italy. Who knows? The cool thing about Granddad staying in Modesto is that we sort of, we developed our own thing. We resisted 
the temptation to move to other places that might tempt us to just fall into other people's groove. I think I realized that we were so onto something, for better or for worse, uh, where we were, that we should just like stay put, have like cheap rent, and just like, you know, be around familiarity, and then just like get weird and uh, see what comes of it. I, I don't know. That was my strategy. And I, other bands have done it. I love it. You know, Flaming Lips did it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I wouldn't have been able to do it any other way. I wasn't ambitious enough on that level to um, see what it what, see what it would be like to like go somewhere else and just like fall in with like another crowd of uh, or a scene or whatever. All right. <laughs> This question has always kind of plagued me. That's like, uh, what is the best child you've ever given birth to? And it's even worse or harder because I've written hundreds upon hundreds of songs. If you're lucky, you have 15 kids. <laughs> if you're normal, you have between one and four. But... I try so hard to make the songs very impactful and full of feeling and and just like jam them full of passion. For there to be one song that has it all is really rare, super rare. But I usually get moments. There's like moments in songs where it's like, ah, like I nailed a moment because I'm like, I'm so involved in the production as well. It's like, I'm writing the songs, I'm making the words, and then I'm like recording them and I'm adding all the shit. And I'm just like, I'm trying to make it like so meaningful with like the sounds and like, it's like, what is it missing? What is it like? How do you make this moment mean more? The one that still gives me chills is a song called um, Rear View Mirror on um, Just Like the Family Cat. I still, I listen to that, especially when I'm driving. I'm like, Rah. and that, man, right before it kicks into the guitar solo, I'm just like, fucking forget about it. Like, like, that's all I want is like for all the songs to have like those moments. But it's, but it's also blessing and a curse. You know, it's like, sorry to say this, and this is kind of dark, but it's like a drug addict is looking for that, that point, the part where it's just like, the drugs hit and it feels so good. But like if all of life was like that, it can't always be like that. You have to have the quiet, calm moments. So when those big moments hit, they mean as much as they do. There's a lot of songs that have those moments, but they're fleeting. And I kind of think that's how life should be. It can't all just be like this, like over the top. You have to have like these calm moments and, like, and then like these beautiful, you know, explosive emotional moments. I like doing things my own way. I got a question about the song Florida. It's like one of my love-hate songs. Kind of one of those songs I just had to get out of my system. It's hilarious. And it was still kind of tapping into like the, my love for the Pixies and my, my need to like, just really belt it, scream hard. But one of my good friends, Gary, his, his brother was just, <laughs> we all have crazy siblings and, um, you just get that one who's just like, man, he's holding out. He's like, I don't know. I have a crazy family. like, And I have friends with crazy families. And we always have like these crazy siblings. And they're just like, I'm just going to live at the lake. I don't need anybody, man. You know what? I, I actually used to go out this model from Florida, man. And she was hot. You'll see. You'll see, man. A uh, few of you can maybe relate. Others... 
not. Anyways, there's a lot of really funny imagery in there that is definitely in the song Florida. And I've always kind of made fun of Florida because it's just like, and I'm sorry, people that live in Florida, but it's just like, ah, it's like there's so much lameness happening there. <laughs> just in a gaudy sort of ridiculous way. But I love you. And there's a lot of lameness happening in California, too. What were you doing in the bar at the mall that afternoon? Um, and that was a real reference. Uh, in Modesto, there was a bar inside the mall, and it was called the... Um, it was called the... Mm, it was called the Hofbrau. And my friend Bean, John Montoya, he, his mom was a uh, bartender at the Hofbrau at the bar in the mall. And it was very dark. And it was the only place where like, just like disgruntled dads could go while their wives were just like shopping and just like racking up shit on the credit cards. We used to go in there and like get drunk for free because his mom was the bartender. And of course, she sold booze to her son and his friend who were underage because that's how we did it in Modesto. I'm all good now, though. <laughs>